Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Yesterday, Creality just released the K1 series in Creality Print open source. In this video, I will show you how I get root access to the OS, then how to install Fluid and use the Moonraker API to print directly over your own Wi-Fi network from Prusa Slicer. First, you need to download the firmware and the Fluid package and install script. I put the links under the description. After you have downloaded all these files, you need to copy the firmware file manually to the USB drive, insert it back into the machine, and you will see this update screen. After that, you need to recalibrate input shaping and bed leveling. It's the same as manually updating firmware, so you should have no problem if you've done that before. When you go to the settings, under the system tab you will see a new option, root account information. Click on that and read the warning message. Remember that you're choosing to do this at your own risk, so neither Creality nor I will be responsible for anything that happens. If you're not too sure about what you're doing and don't feel comfortable moving forward, that's completely fine, and it's a good idea to do more research before you decide to root the machine. But if you're willing to take the risk, just agree to whatever it says. It will then show you the username root and the password creality underscore 2023. You can go to the network tab to find the IP address of your printer. You can use any SSH program to access the Linux terminal of the machine as you will need to copy two files to the printer. I will use MOBA Xterm as it has a file manager for you to drag and drop the files. Start a new SSH connection, enter the IP address, and you can connect to the terminal using the login information provided. You will see there are no files here as we are in the root directory. You can now use the file manager to navigate to the user directory, then simply select the fluid install script and package and drop it into the file manager. Wait for a little bit for the files to upload. After a few minutes, you will see them show up here. When you try to run the install script, it says permission denied. As the file is not executable, use the cd command to change the folder, then use change mod plus x to make the file executable. Even if you are in the same directory, you can't just type the file name, and you still need to type the full path. After the installation is done, you can open your browser to access the Fluid Web interface. As the port is set to 4408 instead of the default HTTP port 80, we need to type the IP address and the port. There isn't much you need to do here, but I will enable the camera by going to Settings, Camera, enable the default camera, and save the change. When you go back to the home screen, you will see the camera is working. Home the machine, and it seems everything is working fine. Next, I will use Prusa Slicer to print directly over my own network. I've created a profile for the K1 Max, and I will put the link under the description. If you're using the K1, you can use the same profile and change the bed size and maximum Z height of your machine, and the rest will be the same. After you import the file, you need to add a physical printer. Select Main Sale and Fluid, enter the IP address and port number, give the printer a name, press the test button, and it looks fine. As the printer has three fans, the part cooling fan, the enclosure fan, and the auxiliary fan, when printing PLA at high speeds, we want all of them to be at the maximum speed. Since Prusa Slicer can control only one fan using the M106 command, we need to do some G-code substitutions. So we can also turn on the enclosure fan, P1, and the auxiliary fan, P2. Go to the filament settings tab. We can't use auto cooling as we want the fan speed to be set to the maximum, so the command will be M106S255 every single time. Otherwise, the G-code substitutions won't work. Let's slice the file. The external walls will be printed at around 100 to 140 millimeters per second, and the infill will be printed at 325 millimeters per second, making the printing time of the 0.2 millimeter layer height benchy 33 minutes, although the actual print time should be a little faster. Let's upload the G-code and start the print. It's going to home the machine and wipe the nozzle as per usual, and after the temperatures are reached, it will start the print. As we are just printing the first layer, you can see all three fans are off. Ignore the part fan, as the part fan is actually fan zero. 
Once the first layer is done, when the part fan is on due to the M106 command, you can see that fan 0, fan 1, and fan 2 are all on and working at full speed. Okay, the Benji looks similar to the one printed with Creality Print and the standard Creality workflow, but you can now get rid of the cloud and the Creality Print completely and use your own slicer and your local network. Of course, you can still use the Creality Slicer and follow the old workflow. However, if you decide to root the machine, please conduct your own research and be prepared for the associated risks, as having root access can potentially disrupt everything if you're not too sure what you're doing. Neither Creality nor I will be responsible for any issues that may arise, so just a fair warning, please think twice before proceeding. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.